actual examples 3.5 to 3.7 and let's generalize the solution by deriving the equivalent nodal forces for a type of loading which is varying so for the first example we have this triangular loading the loading as the slope kx for you may call k times x is w in general so we denote the equivalent nodal forces at the left end as r1 and the right end as r sub 2 then we consider a section here we cut that section at the distance x so that this is the loading that we should consider so that the net force on this section here would be P of X. Then further, we consider a section of differential element length DX so that at this differential length, just to the left and just to the right, the forces would be equal, which is denoted by T of X as shown. So the net P of X is equal to R1 and minus the area of the triangle which is one half of Kx times X for summation forces X equals zero so P of X P of X plus one half of X Kx equals R1 so that's the same from mechanics of materials the formula for deflection is force length over AE actual load but because the length of the member we consider here is differential element and the corresponding deflection would also be in differential form differential delta so uh, the purpose of that so that the force just to the left and just to the right over that section would be the same so integrating the integral of differential delta would be delta and we multiply it by the denominator which is ae and we have integral of P of X from 0 to L of R1 minus 1 half KX square of DX. So evaluating the integral, we have R1X minus KX cube over 6 from 0 to L. So we have AEE equals R1L minus KL cube over 6 minus lower limit 0 minus 0 to 0. Then... AE delta equals R1L minus KL cube over 6 minus 0 equals 0. We then equate the deformation to 0 because remember that this member here is bounded by fixed ends that are not yielding. So even if the segment or this segment of the member is subjected to forces that vary also, we note that the net length of the member it remains L because we have fixed supports at the ends. So meaning to say there is no displacement over the entire support because the length L remains L. So that's the reason why we, the expression for delta L is equated to zero. So solving for R1, R1 therefore is KL squared over 6 and if we sum up forces horizontal equals zero then the total area of the load diagram is one half of L times KL the area of the triangle is equal to R1 plus R2 substituting the value of R1 which is KL square over 6 then we are able to solve for R sub 2 which is KL square over 3 so try to remember that for the equivalent nodal forces at the left it is Equal to KL square over 6 or if you denote the intensity of the load here as W it is W L over 6 if we replace KL by W and here it is KL square over 3 or WL over 3 we now proceed to the second example example 3.6 this time uh, Loading is symmetric with respect to the center and since we already have an idea that the total nodal forces, equivalent nodal forces is equal to the area of the loading diagram, 
We therefore say that R1 and R2 are equal and that is equal to one half of the total area. So R1 equals R2 equals one half of the total area or two times R1 equals the total area. This is the integral of differential area. So we consider this rectangular strip here with height sine pi x dx and thickness dx. That's the differential area. So evaluating the integral of that 0 to L of height sine pi x over L dx. Then 2R1 equals because the differential of pi x over L is pi over L differential of x and there is no pi over L as constant so we introduce the reciprocal of pi over L which is L over pi and write the original expression in equal to integral 0 to L of sine pi x over L times pi over L dx where pi over L times L over pi equals 1. So we write the integral in this form so that we can easily evaluate the integral. Imagine that this is in the form sine of u, where u is pi x over l, and the differential of pi x over l, or the differential of u, is pi over l dx. So this is in the form sine of u du. The integral of sine of u du is, if you can remember, remember your integral calculus, it is negative of cosine u. So L over pi times quantity negative cosine of u, where u is pi x over L, with limit 0 to L. So 2R1 equals negative L over pi, we factor out that, then substitute the upper limit that becomes cosine of pi L over L minus cosine of 0, pi times 0 over L is cosine of 0. Take note that cosine of pi, the simplified value of this is cosine of pi, and cosine of pi is negative 1, or cosine of 180 is negative 1, minus cosine of 0, which is positive 1. So the result, therefore, is negative L over pi times negative 1 minus 1. And this is positive 2L over pi equals 2R1. Divide everything by 2, so we conclude that R1 equals R2 equals L over pi. Then... Finally, for our last example, 3.7, determine the equivalent nodal forces for the load shown below, which is a trapezoid. So denote that R1, R2. Let's divide this trapezoid into two triangles because we already have uh, results for triangular loading like this. So therefore, and we... Also note that W1 equals K1 times L and W2 is K2 times L. So from the results of the nodal forces for these triangular loadings, so due to this triangular loading with intensity W1 at the left, so R1 therefore is K1 L square over 3. And due to the triangular loading which varies from 0 to maximum W2 at the right, it is k2 l square over 6. Replacing k1 l by w1 and k2 l by w2. So r1 equals w1 l over 3 plus w2 l over 6. Similarly, for r sub 2, due to the uniform load, so this is r sub 2, 0 to w1. So it is k1 l square over 6. And due to this triangular load which is intensified at point 2 it is k2 l square over 3 so noting that k1 l is w1 and k2 l is w2 r sub 2 therefore is w1 over w1 l over 6 plus w2 l over 3 so again remember that the sum of this nodal given nodal forces is equal to the area of the diagram therefore if the Loading is uh, uniform loading, which is rectangular in shape. Then, if the intensity of the load is denoted by W with unit newton per mm, then take note that the equivalent nodal forces at the ends would be the same. So, R1 equals R2, and it is equal to one half of the total area. If the if the loading condition is strength is rectangular, then the total area is simply W times L. So R1 equals R2 equals WL over 2 for that case.